Hello friends, I am Ashish Tarpari, founder and CEO of Axomize and really excited to welcome you all to our very first podcast. As some of you may know, we at Axomize are celebrating our second birthday. Yes, we are two years old now. And I thought this might be a good time to start with a new form of engagement with all of you folks who've been in touch with us asking us questions about formal verification, how to get started, how to deploy it on projects, how to get the most out of it. Um, I don't know if you know that much about what we are bringing to the table. So we have a pretty unique combination of offerings that build on training people in formal, followed by giving them hands-on consulting advice on projects to take in on turnkey services work, and then also providing high-end uh, verification IP and proof kits. Uh, all, all of it is designed to power our customers in the use of formal verification. So hey, who is this podcast good for? Well, it is good for anyone who has interest in formal verification and is at any point in time in their career, whether you are a pro, whether you are a complete beginner, or you're somewhere in the middle, you may find that we will provide some of these tips and tricks on getting the most out of formal very useful for your projects. So if you want to start this journey on talking about formal verification, it may be a good thing to just take a step back and figure out what formal verification really is and what it means to me and what it means to the industry and the context of this. So. I obviously have a PhD in formal verification, as some of you may know, um, and I've been looking at problem reduction strategies in the area of formal verification for a very long time. But what excites me most is where we are in the industry with formal right now. Have we got the most that we were expecting to get out of formal? So as I said, what exactly is formal? So for me, formal actually has three major technologies to it. It has got theorem proving where everything got started from. Then you have model checking or property checking. And the third one, which is also very well known, is equivalence checking. Now theorem proving has its roots back in mathematics. And the idea there is to obtain proofs uh, as, as, you know, going back to like our high school days when we used to do Pythagoras theorem and proofs about geometry. So effectively, the root is the same. So we want to construct arguments based on logical reasoning. And that is the main idea of theorem proving. However, the thing about theorem proving is that you can't actually get counterexamples and can't get feedback. But theorem proving has a great benefit. It doesn't suffer from any limits uh, that the property checking and the model checking and the equivalence checking suffers from. And theorem proving has been used very successfully by a number of people, both in academia and in industry, whether it is verifying the floating point, arithmetic units, work done by Intel and IBM and AMD, or actually the verification of compilers and operating systems. Property checking, on the other hand, has been the most widely adopted technique, which is you describe a property capturing the requirements of what you want to verify about your domain, whether it's software or hardware. And then you use a formal tool which automatically computes a proof of bug absence or finds the presence of a bug, which you can then debug and, and get to the root cause of the problem. Equivalence checking, on the other hand, is comparison of two models expressed at different levels of abstraction. And then you are actually comparing them for all reachable states for all possible inputs. And you either get a proof that the two models are always equal or you get a counterexample. Equivalence checking has been known to people in hardware industry, semiconductor industry for a very long time because people have been using it for RTL to gate level equivalence checking. Uh, a lot of people actually in the industry relate to formal because of that. However, full-blown sequential equivalence checking of two models has been in widespread use in the last five to 10 years and is a great strength of formal verification. Property checking, coming back to it, which is, as I said, is the most widely used uh, form, is actually a fascinating way of finding bugs in your design very quickly. 
and also establishing a full proof of bug absence. But you know, sometimes what happens is you're not able to get proofs or convergence, as I say, proof convergence. So neither a pass nor a fail. And you're left with an unknown outcome, which is you run out of time or you run out of memory and you're struggling to find out how to sign off your designs with inconclusive proofs. This is a fascinating topic and I'm going to talk more about this in the coming podcasts. But all of this boils down to this one fundamental question, which is methodology. So the ability to get the most out of formal verification depends on methodology. Methodology doesn't operate in vacuum and it needs to be looked at in context with a process, which is how an organization drives verification and design activity. And obviously technology, which is the space of all the tools that are available to you, automatic tools, semi-automatic tools, free tools, commercial tools. How do you combine the part of this tools kit? What is the methodology that would be used to take which tool and what is the process and in which order we are going to apply what? This is what we are actually excited about. I founded XMIs two years ago to take formal verification methodology to the mainstream masses. Because this is, I, in my opinion, the biggest gap in the industry, the formal verification. In the coming few weeks, in our podcast, we will be talking about methodology. We'll be talking about what it takes you to get started with formal. What are the stumbling blocks? How do you actually cope with these challenges? We, we all need to operate on a fast track basis in our projects in industry, for example. How, how do we take what we know to get the most out of the technology, the tools that we have? How do we sign off our designs with confidence? What abstraction techniques are usable? Where to apply reductions? These are all these fascinating topics that I would be focusing more on. But most of all, I would be looking forward to hearing back from you guys what your feeling has been about formal. What do you really think about formal? What is your biggest challenge? What is your biggest roadblock to formal? Is it the tool? Is it the methodology? Is it the apps? What is stopping you from adopting formal in the mainstream verification? Please email us at info at axiomize.com with your ideas, suggestions, questions, any feedback you may have. And I would love to follow it up in the following podcasts. So hope you like the first podcast. And I'm very much looking forward to engaging with you all more in the subsequent ones. Thank you very much for your time.